Hey everyone, that's STEM guy here. No matter where your classroom is located at around the world, I hope that you are having a great day. Today I'm coming to you from the lab. It is winter break, but I wanted to come in and record this video because uh, I've been getting a lot of requests about this lesson and I really wanted to showcase it for you. So the lesson was reindeer rockets and this is an example of our reindeer rocket. Um, they are a tool to help teach thrust, Newton's third law, um, and also friction, kinetic energy, potential energy. There's a lot you can do with this. It's a super accessible challenge that K through, honestly, high school seniors can do and have fun with. So how does the challenge work? Students will make a balloon reindeer, uh, just a simple balloon. Uh, I use the different colors and different sizes and different shapes and let the students pick which one they wanted. Uh, they then decorate the balloon to look like a reindeer. Picture the balloon is on a string. Okay, so the top of the balloon is the reindeer's face. I gave them a little pom-pom nose, little oogly eyes to cut out, and um, just a brown piece of construction paper for them to um, practice some of their art skills and practice cutting on the fold. So they folded their paper, drew their antlers, and then practiced the cut on the fold. For some of my younger students, they just hand drew them and cut them out. Um, these are all attached using double-sided scotch tape. And on the top of the balloon, we have a smoothie straw attached via duct tape. Now, my balloon is tied because I use this as an example all week, but ideally what you want to use is a chip clip on the balloon nozzle so that it's easily removable, so that when the air is in it, you can easily remove it, and as that air goes out, the students will get to see thrust in action as their balloon races down the line. So speaking of lines and why we have this straw, uh, I use six different types of lines in my uh, activity. I use pure cotton line, I use the nylon mason line, I have fishing line, just a pretty standard wax utility rope, um, purple paracord, and yarn. So I have these six lines rigged up from my whiteboard running all the way back to the back of my room on my closets. So I'll show you that. It was a pretty far course. Um, these clips were what I used to attach the rope, and then the ropes ran all the way to the back and were attached to the handles of the closet. This made it really easy for me as I was transitioning between groups because I can just unclip and thread the new balloon through and send it on its way. Uh, another thing that I found really helpful was I used the chip clips with the magnetic back. So on some of the lines, it was easier to keep the balloon in the starting place because I could just magnet clip it to the board as well. When students are ready to start their race, they just pull their chip clip and their balloon rocket will go flying to the end of the line. Some of the things I used to help my lesson go a little bit smoother were these handheld balloon pumps. Um, this is an example of a student project that is now deflated. Um, basically, I told the students, you know, just put your balloon on your nozzle and inflate it until you get it to a, you know, size that you think won't pop. Um, and then just clamp it. Um, obviously, they would put a little bit more air in this and this would be chip clipped on. Um, and it would be hung up on the board and then when I say go, they remove that clip and that balloon shot down the line. So students got to observe thrust in motion. They got to um, choose the line that they wanted to race on. This helped them understand friction and which lines would be faster or which lines would be slower. We saw a lot of cool um, races and a lot of cool learning involved. Uh, we learned that the fishing line was really fast. However, if you had a big heavy balloon with a lot of air in it, it weighted down a lot and it would sag, so it wouldn't perform as well. But some of our balloons with a little less air in it performed really well on that fishing line. We learned the cotton line offered a lot of drag, so it was very, very, very slow. It would oftentimes spin your balloon around. We learned that the paracord was really good, but it was such a heavy line that it had a dip in it so that when the balloon went, it would have to go down and then have enough energy to still make it back up to reach that finish line. So experiment with some different lines to give the students a chance to see how they perform. I told my students that the balloons were like a firework, so it was a one-time use kind of thing. So once they ran, I had to get the next group up there just because I do have limited time in my lessons. Finally, a twist that I added at the end of the week was my favorite Christmas song is Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. So I found these little grannies just on Google and I printed them out, they're little coloring sheets. It's an angry looking granny. Um, and I first put a paper clip through the line and then attached the balloon. I slid the paper clip all the way down about maybe two feet from the finish line and then just paper clipped the granny in there. So the kids got to run over, you know, Grandma got run over by a reindeer. They got to run over their grannies as they hit the finish line and they love that little, wink, that little wrinkle, that little twist. 
It made the challenge uh, super special for my classes that had it on Friday. So there you have it. It was a pretty, pretty simple lesson. Balloon rockets have been around forever. There's a lot you can teach in it. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways that you can theme this thing. I did it around the holidays. I themed it with reindeer. Um, there, just your creativity can help you come up with other ideas so you can do this challenge year round. Um, if you do plan to do it reindeer style and you are a little bit worried about, ooh, reindeer, Christmas, Christmas, religious holiday, is that gonna be okay in my district? Well, one of the things that I found out doing my own research on the product project is that reindeer racing is a real sport. It's competed in Norway, Finland, and Russia. Competitors are on skis. They're behind the reindeer with uh, holding onto reins and the reindeers run down a snow covered track pulling the, uh, the participant behind them. So it is a real sport. So if, if you're worried about kind of the holiday of Christmas being involved in your project, theme it to reindeer racing because reindeer racing is a real sport. So tell the kids, we're doing reindeer racing today. Show them some videos of it. There's even reindeer racing that happens in America, happens in Alaska. It's more of a running with the reindeer, kind of like running with the bulls fun activity for people and, and the reindeers run down the street with the participants and it's you know kind of a big family thing. So it doesn't have to have that religious connection if you don't want it to. Uh, so if you wanna do some reindeer racing, teach your kids about the actual sport before going into the science behind it and then going into the instructions. So everyone, thank you for your support this year by joining my channel, my subscribers, I really do appreciate you. Um, this lesson plan is on my Teacher Pay Teacher store. If you want a more detailed account of all the supplies you need, kind of how to put it together, some tips, um, some reflection questions, all that's on there. You can visit the link in my bio for the TPT store um, front. Uh, also, I wanna wish everybody a happy holidays. Thanks for the support this year. I'm trying to grow this channel. I'm two quarters into building this program at my school and I can't be more excited for what's to come. And I really thank you again for liking and subscribing my videos uh, and following me on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and following along and all the fun that my students are uh, having while they are learning, which is the most important thing. So everyone be safe and have a great holiday. STEM guy, we'll see you in 2023.